Hi all, our instructive game today will have the theme of the Knight on C5. To demonstrate this theme, I'm going to choose one of my own games played in round 7 of the British Championship of 2008. Playing black, I was paired against Christopher Gibson, who I'd lost previously a few years ago in the South End tournament. I didn't really want to repeat my King's Engine against him because I thought he might have prepared some lines against the King's Engine. So actually I prepared a, an entirely new novel system just for this particular day. It was the second week and in the first week I hadn't managed to win a single game. And I was hoping that by playing a surprise opening I would increase my chances slightly of scoring my first victory. So what I prepared was actually after his D4 I prepared D6. And I had found lots of games of GM Tony Miles, the late GM, playing this system with great success. It's quite a powerful system, I believe. And after C4, the idea is to play E5, voluntarily offering White the opportunity to exchange queens after D takes, D takes, queen takes. But this is fine for black. It's played by quite a few strong players, even in my local Hertfordshire league, like Swanson plays this system for black. And I had a game with him as white, and basically later, the king is very good. It can come to c7 after c6, king c7. And black can have a very nice plan of a5, getting the knight to c5, etc. Now, after d5, which is my opponent's move, this isn't the most critical reply. But he does give me this nice post for my knight, which is the theme of this game, the knight on c5. And this did actually help me win the whole game. This idea of being able to play simple positional chess, trying to get a positional advantage against the opponent. But in this particular game, it was the c5 knight which really helped the whole strategy. So I played f5, which was I researched to be a quite an aggressive move, played at least by Moles and Hodgson in this position. After e4, though, perhaps best is, is taking simply, because white doesn't have a queen h5 and queen takes, the, the, the e5 is protected. I didn't actually do that. I thought knight f6 would be okay. As long as white doesn't gain a, a massive grip on the e4 square, um, it should be fine. I was a little bit concerned about that, but uh, my pieces are well developed here. After knight f3, I played g6. So when he does play bishop d3, I don't have to move my bishop away. I can still contest this e4 square. So he plays knight c3, and after bishop g7, he plays bishop g5. And... Here is where I want to secure my potential knight outpost. I play a5. So I've got two plans alternatively. Knight coming via this route or via this route to c5. Off the bishop d3, I chase now his bishop. I expected him actually to consider taking on f6 just to increase his, his control of the e4 square. But um, he took on f5 instead, which potentially I thought would be really good for me because after g takes, I'm now covering my liability, that e4 square. And now he just retreated his bishop to e3. Now here, instead of a routine castling move, I thought, why don't I just play knight g4 here? It seems quite tempting to go after that dark square bishop. So I played it, and he played now queen e2. And now I, I remember from another game I played um, in the King's Indian, actually, where I took immediately on e3. And then in post-mortem analysis, I wondered why I'd taken immediately. There's, there's no hurry, really, to take that bishop. If it moves back, then fine. My knight can get that nice c5 square. So actually, I just castle here, and he castles queenside. And now I carry on my plan, knight a6. So, you know, is he going to waste time with h3, allowing me to take on e3? Actually, he didn't. He played bishop d2. And now we see the start of the implications of my hero in this game, which is this knight on c5. Because here, he can't play h3. Can you see why he can't play h3 here? I'll give you five seconds, starting from now. He can't play this because of knight takes f2. Because if queen takes, then knight d3. So my hero is already having an effect, this knight on c5. So he has to meekly defend the f2 pawn. So he plays rook df1. And now I play e4, just stretching my bishop. So my positional plays really work like a treat here. I've got all my pieces in nice squares. I haven't got any minor piece problems on the queen side being undeveloped. My rooks and queen um, are nicely coordinating. And after knight e1, he seems to have a very passive position. I play rook e8 here after quite some careful consideration. The idea is I don't want him ripping open any files against my king. And if f3, for example... 
I, I was looking at E takes, Queen takes, and now simply playing Rook F8. And, you know, I'm c keeping these lines closed, and I thought this would be okay. So, he didn't actually play that. <clears throat> Pardon me. He played King B1. <clears throat> and I played now C6. So, potentially, my Queen can come to B6. Also, I also have other aggressive plans, like Rook A6 to B6, potentially. So, really, you know, this Bishop is very nice on this diagonal. This Knight is very nice. And all my pieces are working quite well. He plays h3 now. And after knight e5, he tries to open the lines. He plays g4. Now, instead of my queen going to b6, I had to sort of decide, do I want it there or do I want it on f6, just to support my king a little bit, and also potentially use this diagonal. I decided, actually, eventually queen f6 would be more accurate than my originally intended queen b6. And after g takes, queen takes. Now, he has to watch out for this diagonal. He played, actually, king a1, a bit oblivious to the tactical resources in the position, especially my heroic piece will come into play now, as we'll see. I play a4, and can you spot the major tactical threat here? He plays rook hg1. So I'll give you five seconds here. Can you spot the move I played here? The move I played here was knight b3. So I'm trying to rip open the a line. He took, because let's say king b1, then there's e3 check, and I'm winning lots of material at the very least. So knight d3, knight takes d3, and it's all over really. This is just horrendous. Uh, Ripka gives that this as an example, knight f4, e4, and just taking you know, and and white is just losing tons of material. You know, it's just it's all over. Tons of material will be lost. So basically, after knight b3, he he um, he just took it and allowed me to open this a line. After king b1, e3 is still crushing. And here, like a gentleman, maybe he was wanting me to get the the game prize for for that day. He just played king c1, just allowing him to, to to mate to be mated by rook a1 check. So after knight b1, I just play rook takes b1, mate. So I was very pleased, actually, to have my first win in the championship. So it was the Monday of the second week, and almost a tear came into my eye, actually. So let's have a look in overview and summary at this game. I tried to establish this knight strategy of a knight to c5 using this novel opening, which immediately asked White what he's going to do with the d-pawn. He played the passive d5. If you play the system and they play d5, I think you've already won the opening, because now you can play f5, which is quite an aggressive move. And you have a nice variation, you know, kind of like the King's Engine. So it's nice for the King's Engine players to play this system. So I didn't accept his pawn set. Instead, I, I just tried to contest e4, and later get this knight to c5, which proved to be my heroic and winning piece of the game. So knight a6. And now the knight came to c5 with immediate implications. He couldn't play h3 because the knight takes f2. And after e4, I was really stretching my pieces out. My positional play was just increasing and increasing my position. And his attempt to open the lines resulted in actually his king getting further exposed because of this accurate queen f6. So I used that diagonal. And finally, this A line, you know, his king wasn't even safe on A1. It wasn't over for his king safety. It was the beginning of, of even more uh, tactics. So knight B3 was just the winning um, combination. So he allowed me to mate him. So I hope you enjoyed that game and the novel opening and the idea of the knight on C5 being a very powerful piece straight, straight from the opening in this game. Please leave any comments on YouTube. Thanks very much.